I'm Rick McGuire. I'm the executive editor of CardioSource World News. I am with one of the legends of cardiology. This is now official as of this meeting. She is a legend, Dr. Jane Somerville. You and I have worked together in the past, and you are a legend. What does it feel like to be a legend? <laughs> it's not something I really recognize. I have to reflect on that. And what, it, what is lovely is I get very spoiled at the ACC. Good. And everything is made easy for me, and I'm very happy to be here. Your specialty has been congenital heart disease. Yes. Uh, what has changed in the, in the time since you first started this until today? What has changed the most? What still needs to change? Well, what has changed the most is that the surgeons mainly, plus the development of pediatric cardiology and all that goes with it, has completely revolutionized the prognosis of congenital heart disease. So instead of 60 to 65% dying of infants born with heart disease, they now mostly live. And we, we and live to reach adolescents and adult lives. I mean, the startling thing now is we have more people, more adults alive with congenital heart disease than we have children. That's the first time that's happened in this country. It was, it's now about a million or, or, or so. Well, uh, I think the statistics, you know, one of the, one of the problems is that I think my colleagues have overcounted. Nobody can find the number of predicted congenital hearts in adolescents and adults that they say are there. And I think they've got it muddled up with patients who survive and don't require medical help and those that do require medical help. And I think there's a disparity. One is a guesstimate, and it's been going on about this million in the United States. You certainly haven't provided for a million and you can't find them anyway. Whether it will be like that, what is, is that's the major change, is that the prognosis has been reversed. So that I don't know whether there are more, but there are very many, and services require to be established to look after those patients, because well, they're not all well. Right, and we still have cardiologists who are surprised because suddenly they have patients walking in that they're not really all that trained for. So it's, what do you do with an adult congenital heart disease patient? Well, I think, first of all, they have to stop being refer uh, surprised, stop meddling with them when they don't have the knowledge and can't say, I don't know, and re try and find a centre or someone who does know. They and are there. They're around. Very few in this country. You have underprovided. In that field? Grossly underprovided. I think we could perhaps find six, seven established units, and that's not enough, for, particularly these big numbers predicted, which they can't find. But there are a lot of patients out there that are not being treated, and people are having a go at them, both surgeons, physicians, cardiologists, and it's a bad reflection on your health service. I mean, I did see a lot more papers on congenital heart disease, I think, at this meeting that I've seen on some of the past. What do we still need to do? We have made some great advances in your lifetime. What is left to do? Well, uh, we now have a, a somewhat different problem. What is left to do for this country is to get themselves organized so that these people on whom so much lavish care in pediatric period and infancy and are made to survive, that someone continues to look after them when they need it. So the first thing you need to do is to establish centers for the patients. It's no good just leaving, uh, making them live half their lives and half, more than half of their life they're badly cared for. So that's the first thing, if you ask me what you need to do in this country, is establish medical service. And the problem is that m where money is linked to a patient in some form or other, doctors don't necessarily want to transfer them. They think they know best. And all this education about them teaches them just a little bit. A little learning is a dangerous thing, said Alexander Pope. And so they're all having a go. They come to a course, they think they know how. They need to go, many of them, to special centers. Sorry. In adult cardiology, they are not pediatric patients to be squeezed into little cots. No, I agree. And they can't be treated in pediatric hospitals. So we've got that problem. But the new problem we have is I think it's very worrying about when they do need further surgery, they're really very difficult. And are we going to have enough, are we going to have cardiac surgeons to do congenital heart disease across the age span, because that requires... Well, that's what we're trying to do now, is to get do the studies so we can see how do we treat these patients, because they, they are going to have some different needs, surgically. Of course they're going to have different needs, but we're not going to have cardiac surgeons soon. 
to do all this and have this long training, not just for the adults, for the children as well. In Europe, we are short of pediatric cardiac surgeons. It is extraordinary because the training is too long, the administration interferes too much, uh, they have to give up too much, it's a tough life, and you know all this family work balance life applies to men as well as to women. Then they don't want to do it. I mean, it's very nice to know there is still work for a legend to do, and I thank well, you for I'm doing it. I'm not going to do it, but I'm very happy to be seen by you, and I hope we meet again.